Tag Teach is a methodology that can be used to speed up skill acquisition in children with autism. In today's video blog, I'm discussing how to incorporate this into your child or client's programming to get more effective skill acquisition. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, board certified behavior analyst, online course creator, and best-selling author of The Verbal Behavior Approach. Each week, I provide you with some of my ideas about turning autism around. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do that now. Today, I'm sharing a small excerpt from podcast number 27, which is an interview with Teresa McKeon discussing Tag Teach. You can check out the full episode at marybarbera.com forward slash 27 or click the card on the screen now. Can you describe what Tag Teach is, what it stands for, and tell me how it was used for the gymnasts first, because I think that's really interesting. Yeah, so Tag Teach uh, stands for, it's an acronym, the tag is an acronym for Teaching with Acoustic Guidance. And one of the things that I used with the gymnasts was the clicker. And in the beginning, it was just this fun toy. They all wanted to use it. They all wanted to, what we call tag, um, put that acoustic mark to another person. And then one day, one of the kids said, hey, my mom uses that with our dog. And she said, you can't train us like a dog. Uh, and I said, well, I, I'm actually training you like a respectful teacher because all we were doing was deciding as teachers what we wanted, and then letting in a very quick, non-emotional way, letting the, the student know that they had performed the skill, and then said, yes, that's what we want. Um, at the time, I originally tried to give them little chocolates or something, but what I found was they'd say, wait, 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 hold on, let me just do this again. And I went, ah, success was what is reinforcing, right? The, the success when you want to do something at the moment is the most reinforcing thing. You want to do it again. Now, if you're teaching people who don't want to learn, that's a little different scenario. You have to work with different reinforcers, but I was really lucky because the one thing they wanted to do was succeed. <laughs> and it's, it's, if I could tell them the instant they succeeded, that, that was just amazingly reinforcing. They wanted to do it again and again. So one of the things that sticks out for me when, when I heard your story of buying the horse and then creating Tag Teach to work with humans, so teaching with acoustic guidance, is when they went to do a handstand and when they got their legs completely up to the right position, that's when someone, you or another child, could be yep. watching them and they would get up to the exact spot and then the click would happen, the audible click, so that they knew, yes, I got up to the very right position. Because otherwise, if you don't have that click, it's a very you know instant response. You could only be there for a split second. Yeah. Um, or if you're trying to do a trick, like a round off or a cartwheel or whatever, you're, you're, re you're marking or clicking for mm -hmm. one behavior that is, is really good. So that yeah. was a good, you know, for our listeners out there, and it would probably be better with a video and showing them clicks and everything, which there's plenty of YouTube examples of, of tag teach and there's plenty yeah. And if they go, if they go to tagteach.com so that they can see the, the videos that are, uh, there are some videos out there that we did not put out, but people said they were tag teach videos. Oh, so, okay. so go to the website, the, the, the tag teach YouTube website and, and get the good videos. Sorry. Just wanted to yeah. say. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. So the, basically the power of just like you worked with your horse to, to mark or to click one good behavior, um, it was it was really breaking it down for the gymnasts and they were able to even click each other um and give give feedback to each other instead of just i think you mentioned this too instead of just i don't know how old they were say 10 years old you know 10 10 year old girls watching or really just chatting with their neighbor while they're waiting for their turn they were actually focused on this is my my learner pair I need to watch Susie and give her the click when it at the appropriate time. Yeah, we call so, it peer tagging. Yeah. Um, so they, you know, the peers are tagging each other. And what we found was is not only are they not out 
bouncing off walls or trampolines or not paying attention. You know, I'm air quoting not paying attention. But they were focused on the very thing that they were then going to have to do. So they were mentally practicing it by watching and saying, yes, that was it. And I knew that they could understand what they, was going to be expected of them. Because if they clicked at the wrong moment, the wrong skill, I went, they don't know what I've asked them to do even visually to see it. So how can I ask them to do it physically? So it was a great skill for me to monitor whether um, the athletes knew what they were supposed to do and what position, what is vertical, right? You know, or, or, or what is the 90% angle that I wanted? And if they marked at the right time or clicked at the right time, I knew that at least intellectually they knew or visually they knew what the, the trick was. So yeah, I got yeah. double learning, double practice. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, and I really, uh, those are some of the things that stuck in my mind about the gymnasts. And I know we're here to talk about autism, but, you know, it was really stuck in my mind, that visual of the girls chatting with each other versus really on point and, and marking each other's behaviors. And I think there are a few studies, gosh, I have to go back and look, but I believe there are at least two studies were with children with ASD did peer tagging studies for social skills. Mm. Uh, seeing when they would see somebody smile, they would tag um, with, with each other with peers. So I think there has been some work with, with people yeah. with autism. So let's transition. How has tag teach then been used to help kids with autism? Well, I, I'm going to veer off just slightly and say what's interesting to me personally, and I'm not sure this would be what other people would say was, it has helped people with autism by helping parents or people who work with them to more clearly define what it is they're looking for and to, uh, because it is that one mark, if you're going to click it as a single instant that is that you're looking for. So it helps the teachers say, okay, I'm only looking for one thing and I've already decided what that is. Uh, so it's a little calming. And to me, that's the most important part. Right. And then on the other side, the children are not getting mixed messages. You're very clear about what, it, what you're looking for and what's acceptable and what is going to be reinforced. So some and of the it's things, a game. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> some of the things I know that I've used Tag Teach with kids with autism, including my son, is um, articulation, uh, eye contact, handwriting, um, really any, any skill. We, and I did a study and I presented uh, at the ABA conference with you. And it was so funny because I had taken the online course, the Tag Teach online course back in 2009. And this is, you know, a couple of years after I wrote my book, I had been a behavior analyst for five years. And um, I had taken the online course because it seemed once I heard your story about the gymnasts and, and a lot of my clients at the time were completely non-vocal mm. and not understanding directions. And um, I was just like, how do I reach those kids quicker, more effectively, more efficiently? And so I took the online course and I really, I really loved it back then. I mean, it was 10 years ago. And I remember it was just very laid out. It was not for a behavior analyst, but it's, no, like, it's really general it's, yeah. it's basic and general but it was so like oh wow you know because sometimes we get a little too uh, far ahead of ourselves but you know teach someone how to do a new skill so I so Spencer at the time was probably around 10 years old my, oh. my typically developing child and I was just like all right Spence I'm going to teach you how to tie a man's tie you know uh, I'm going to yeah. use this tag teach I want to teach you this and he goes, I'm not your lab rat. And he walked away. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> he could go all the way back to Skinner then. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this short snippet from the podcast. If you want more content, check out the podcast at marybarbera.com forward slash podcast. Wherever you're watching this, I'd love it. If you would leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up share this video with others who may benefit. And for more information, you can attend a free online workshop at marybarbera.com forward slash workshop. And I'll see you right here next week.